Hey everyone, welcome back to the Macula. Today I want to dive into a topic that truly fascinates me the surprising ways our surroundings and environment shape our personality traits and tendencies. We often assume personality is fixed and innate, arising more from nature than nurture. But groundbreaking new psychology research is showing nurture plays a far bigger role than we realize. Where you grow up and live can actively shape who you are in profound ways. In this video, I'll break down some eye-opening studies on how factors like urbanization and culture influence personality development. This challenges conventional wisdom and offers a more nuanced view of what makes us who we are. There are deep implications here that change how we should perceive personality differences across individuals and societies. Alright, let's get into it. Oh! Before we continue make sure you subscribe to the Macula and hit the bell icon for notification about more interesting videos. Alright, let's get into it. For a long time, the image of personality and psychology was fixed. We have set traits like patience, aggression, anxiety and so on. These were seen as stable parts of our identity, originating more from genes and human nature than environment. Walter Mischel's famous marshmallow test in the 1960s and 70s reinforced this view. Children who resisted eating one marshmallow right away to get two later achieved greater success in life. This self-control seemed innate. But what if patience is more situational? What if environment shapes your ability to delay gratification? This new view upends the traditional perspective. Recent studies reveal a major weird bias in psychology most research focuses narrowly on Western, educated, industrialized, rich, democratic societies. These represent only 12% of global population not a useful proxy. Indigenous populations provide an illuminating contrast. Studies of sure children in Ecuadorian rainforests reveal very different tendencies compared to weird kids. Sure children are more impatient and uncertainty averse. They strongly prefer one candy now over two tomorrow. They avoid risky gambles for more candy. Urbanization seems to shift preferences. Researchers compared urban and rural sure kids. Rural forest kids were less patient and more uncertainty averse. Environment modifies perceived costs and benefits of waiting. Other studies have found the Big Five personality model doesn't fit indigenous Bolivians and Africans well. Weird psychology concepts don't transfer cleanly. Some experts argue that as societies industrialize, more occupational roles emerge. This enables more personality niche variation to develop and succeed. The message is that personality forms via ongoing gene-environment interplay. Your surroundings actively shape who you become, not just innate factors. For example, patience and risk tolerance are more adaptive where resources are abundant and delays affordable. Environment adjusts tendencies. This matches anthropology showing cultural practices actively cultivate personality like meditation fostering serenity. We have to move beyond the tendency to essentialize personality as fixed and innate. Personality is heavily a product of where you are, not just who you are. On reflection, this makes sense. Personality develops via adaptation to surroundings. Different cultures have different norms, expectations and developmental demands. A stoic warrior personality succeeds in violent clans. But that doesn't work in a modern corporate office. Environment shapes adaptive traits. This dynamic view of personality also resonates with the body of psychology exploring induced state effects how states become traits over time through recurrent activation. For instance, regularly inducing gratitude and kindness can eventually cultivate a more grateful, kinder personality disposition. Personality follows states shaped by the environment. Big implications arise here. First, more accurate models of personality development, avoiding weird bias. Different societies will show different adaptive trait clusters. Second, 
Understanding personality differences with more empathy. Seeing how environment and context shape people's traits. Third, tweaking developmental environments, cultures and practices to cultivate more prosocial, successful personalities from childhood. Personality is not fixed or innate as commonly assumed. It remains open to being actively shaped by the environment. For example, education systems could teach mindfulness and self-regulation, which translate into patient, disciplined personalities over time, as mental states become entrenched traits. Conclusion The research covered here fundamentally challenges how we understand the origins of personality. We need to move beyond seeing personality as arising only from within, shaped by innate character. Instead, we must appreciate how deeply our surroundings shape who we become. Personality is highly influenced by adapting to cultural context and developmental demands. This more accurate view provides insights into engineering healthier environments and educational systems to raise flourishing, prosocial citizens. We shape personality development more than we realize. The interplay between inner and outer factors in shaping personality is endlessly fascinating. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. But for now, thank you for watching, don't forget to subscribe and hit the thumbs up, and I'll see you in the next one.